Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about this unusual planet known as 50i Cancrii E. This planet was actually discovered back in 2004 and it's kind of been redefined several times because our understanding of what this world is like has changed quite dramatically. Today we're going to talk about why this world is actually really cool and about the new research paper about this unusual world. Welcome to What The Math. So, first of all, let's actually zoom out of this system and take a look at what we actually are dealing with here. This is the system known as 50i Cancrii. It's about 41 light years away from our beautiful planet Earth toward the constellation of Cancer. Now, in this system, there is actually not one, not two, but five planets we've discovered. And you're going to see all five in a few seconds. All of these planets have actually been discovered for quite some time now. And these were some of the first planets we actually found using various um, data analysis. And the one that you see kind of releasing a lot of steam, that's the one we're going to be taking a look at. This is the E planet. Um, now, the first planet to be discovered is, I believe, right here. This is uh, Cancri B. This is actually a, kind of a Jupiter-like object discovered something like 20 years ago in 1996. So these are relatively old discoveries and uh, some of them are slightly newer, discovered 2004. I think the further one is actually even newer than that, 2007. Uh, but what's interesting is that you'll notice that all of them actually have names. As a matter of fact, they have proper names. This is because back in 2016, the Astronomical Union decided to uh, vote on naming a lot of the uh, objects, including, of course, the infamous uh, Lich Pulsar, and these planets actually got the names too. So the star here is known as Copernicus. That's the star in the middle. It's actually very, very sun-like, uh, maybe a little bit less massive, a little bit less hot than our sun. The, uh, the actual mass is about 95% of the mass of the sun, but it's very similar in every respect. It's a G-type star. Then we have the planet we'll be looking at, and this is uh, known as Janssen. Um, and all of these planets are named after famous astronomers or people in the field of astronomy. And the one that was discovered first was, is uh, the Galileo planet. This is what it looks like here. Then we have Brahe, uh, Harriet, and uh, the last planet to be named is Lippershey. So, we're actually talking about Janssen. We're going to be visiting Janssen and taking a look at it in a little bit more detail. But let's actually first briefly talk about what we thought this planet was. So if you actually watch some of the older YouTube videos from various channels, and also if you just read some of the older articles online, people often um, call this planet the Diamond World. Because we actually, for some reason, not for some reason, but we actually thought that this was a very large, uh, very hot carbon-like object, probably in diamond in composition. That turned out to be wrong we realized that it was actually very, very, very hot and it would probably not be able to survive such ridiculously high temperatures. And so some of the later papers actually re, um, redefined this planet as something else. And I'm going to show you what. You can probably imagine what. The planet was actually redefined as a lava planet. A, a very large Earth-like, although a lot more massive than Earth, specifically at least um, six to eight masses of Earth, and very hot on every single side, and basically kind of something that looks exactly like this. So this was the definition, or I guess the kind of unofficial designation of this planet for a very long time. So we actually thought this was a very hot lava world. But then the recent paper, specifically a paper by Isabel Angelo from UC Berkeley, and it's a paper I posted in the description called A Case for an Atmosphere on Super Earth 55 Cancri E, talks about how this is actually probably not what it looks like. As a matter of fact, it's more likely that this object actually does look like this. It's very, very possible, and her paper actually defined this in a, in a very specific detail, that there is very thick atmosphere on this planet, and yes, it is hot, it's probably super hot, the lava here is not actually visible because of the thick atmosphere. And so in other words, 
um, there is, first of all, this planet is actually uh, tidally locked, so there's two sides of the planet. There's the side facing the sun, or the star that is, 55 can create, and there is the side that doesn't face the star. And so when they actually looked at the um, spectra, the atmosphere spectra of this planet, they realized that there was actually no light coming off the dark side, or almost no light. In other words, the, if there was lava, it would be pretty easy to kind of distinguish it. And they realized that it's very likely that either lava is just not present there, or more likely is that there, there is actually an exchange of um, atmospheric conditions between the light side and the dark side, and so the temperature is... Um, somewhat similar on both sides. In other words, it's also very hot here, but the lava is probably hidden by the atmosphere. And on top of that, it's actually a little bit cooler on the other side. So uh, they've uh, been able to calculate that the light side here is something like uh, 2,300 degrees Celsius or about 4,200 degrees Fahrenheit. And the dark side is about uh, 13 degrees Celsius or 2,400 degrees Fahrenheit. So there is about a thousand degree difference, but if there was no atmosphere, this would be much, much, much cooler. It would probably be even closer to zero degrees, if not less. So because of such an unusually high temperature on the dark side, uh, the scientists who wrote this paper realized that it's very likely that there is a very, very thick atmosphere. Now, in this case, the atmosphere is actually something like 67 atmospheres, so 60 times or 67 times uh, thicker than the atmosphere of Earth. And it's actually quite possible that this is what we would find here, which would also suggest that uh, the greenhouse effect here is ridiculously strong. And on top of this, the composition of this atmosphere is also very, very unusually similar to Earth. So there's a lot of nitrogen here, there's even oxygen here, and carbon dioxide. So it's kind of like, imagine if Earth was a lot thicker in atmosphere and was a lot closer to our own sun and also a lot more massive, this is what you would get if you came here. But because the temperatures are so ridiculously high, there's almost no chance for any life as we know it. And obviously this is not really a habitable world at all because it is just ridiculously, ridiculously hot here. And since this uh, object is also about 8 times more massive than our own Earth, that also means that the gravity here is about 2.3 times stronger. So this is like Earth if it was extreme in every single respect, including, of course, the temperature. Now, interestingly, there's even water here. At least there's water molecules. But as you can imagine, it's water that's basically just pure vapor. And so this is actually what you see coming off this planet if you zoom out. This right here is the atmosphere escaping because of the proximity to the star, 55 Cancri, but also it's the atmosphere that will probably stay around this planet for a very long time. So even though it's losing so much atmosphere, it's probably still replenishing it from the surface, or maybe there's a mechanism in, in here that we don't really truly understand. So this, this was a very unusual discovery. First of all, we didn't really expect to find an atmospheric planet so close to its home star because you would expect the star to just blow everything away. And this kind of makes us wonder why and how it was able to maintain this atmosphere. The current assumption is that it's maybe because there is very strong magnetic uh, field here, also known as magnetosphere, that is able to protect this planet from the emissions from the sun, or from the star that is. Um, but on the other hand, it's also maybe just something completely different that we don't really understand yet. So, oh no, this is actually a very unusual world, even more unusual than we thought before. I mean, if this was a diamond planet, that would be cool and all, but the fact that this is an Earth-like planet that's just extremely hot, but everything else is very Earth-like, uh, makes this a very unusual yet somewhat unfriendly world, but definitely a world we should be studying in the future. And then what's even more interesting is that one day, when this star actually becomes a white dwarf, just like our own sun, this might actually become a very comfortable world to live on. And we'll kind of discuss this in one of the future videos. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video, and hopefully you learned a little bit more about Ken Kriai system, and specifically the planet known as Jensen. In some of the future videos, we'll explore the system a little bit more because it's actually one of the most famous exoplanetary systems out there. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Please subscribe if you still haven't. 
share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out and as always, bye bye. And by the way, you may have missed this, but there was actually another star orbiting around the system. There's a star by the name of 55 Cancri IB, which is a companion star to the main one. So this is actually a binary system.